So if you're using SvelteKit and more specifically SSR, and you're exporting your global state from some file like this, and then reusing it across your entire application, then you might be putting yourself at risk of leaking data between requests on the server side. So let's look at why. So this discussion here has been open since March of 2022, so it's definitely not new, but I, along with many others that I've seen fall victim or fell victim to this thought that if I have this here, it's okay. This is a client side thing, my client side state. I'm not really like accessing that state on the server side, I don't think. But what you don't realize is that in order to render out one of these pages here, if you're using server side rendering, it's going to execute the code that's inside these script tags on your server. And so why is that an issue? So as soon as you create your own store, it becomes global server side in an SSR context. So what does that mean? Well, when we export this global right here, this becomes global. So if we have a long running node process, then this is the same object that's using every single time. And then even if we don't have a long running node process, if we're using serverless functions, those can still handle multiple requests before they actually tear down. So it's not like every single time it stands up a whole new instance just for your every single request. So we still have risk of leaking data between different requests, which could mean leaking data between different users, potentially data that you wouldn't want to leak. And the flip from server render content to client render content is so quick that you may not even realize that it's happening. But again, obviously that's a major liability. And that's something that I don't even want to like see, okay, how can I make sure that if I do do this, I can prevent that. This is more of a I don't want to introduce this risk into my project. So therefore, we're going to handle this a better way. I'm going to link this discussion in the description below. And there's a lot of messages here that you can read through. But down here at the very bottom, we had a new message that said, could someone tell me if Svelte 5 Runes addresses this problem somehow? And no, it does not. Of course, it's at, not at the box. That's not, this isn't necessarily a Svelte problem, nor is it a Svelte kit problem. It's more so of just a problem of our understanding and kind of mingling of server and client stuff. So let's first discuss what I'm referring to when I say global state. So global state and how it's being referred to in this video is global app state. So global client side state that basically we can define somewhere, likely the root of our project, and then access, update, reuse a bunch of different places within our app. So if we did in fact want to implement global state and we didn't want to define it in some module and then export it and then re-import it into all of our components, if we think about this, the layouts wraps every single thing within our application, the root layout. So the root layout is going to wrap everything, every page, every component within those pages, every component within those components. So it makes the most sense if we're talking about true global state here, meaning it's available everywhere to define it inside the layout. You could also have like a scoped or a global ish state, a scoped global state, right? So you'd have some state, maybe you had a different layout for your authenticated users. You could have it there. In this case, we're talking global app wide. So the root layout is ultimately the best place for this. And what comes to mind immediately is that we can use the Svelte context API to essentially initialize all of those states. So if we're using Svelte stores, we would initialize the stores there, set them to the context, which means that any descendant of this layout could reach up and grab that data, grab that store, grab that reactive object, if we're talking about Svelte 5, or grab the reactive class. We define the state here in the layout. And then if one of these table of content items needs that state for some reason, they can just reach up to the context, get that state, update the state, read the state, and so on and so forth. And every single one of these components will be able to reach up and grab data from the root layout. So in order to implement what I was referring to with the context global state, we're not going to be doing it the caveman way where we just set context directly inside of our layouts and then try to remember what that key we used was. We're actually going to make sure it's set up nice and clean so that this is not a burdensome task for you to stop using these global liabilities here. Now I went ahead and prepared this demo application that we're going to use just to see and visualize this happening in real time. So everywhere that you see the name here is eventually going to be replaced with global state. So we're using Svelte 5. We're going to cover, like I mentioned, the writable store. We're going to cover the reactive object using runes, as well as the reactive class with the same exact technique. And so this layout just has the navigation as well as the children being rendered and the footer. The footer is just something very simple here. We have a page which has that corny, typical welcome back user message here. And then inside of our profile page, we have again the name. We also have an input that we're going to use to bind and update and have the rest of our UI react to these updates to that global state from way down here in the input. 
And we also have a root layout load, which I'm using to simulate fetching from a database and getting a user's profile data or something, and then returning it to our root layout. So here in our state.svelte.ts file, I've went ahead and commented this out and I've removed all of our globals. As I mentioned, we're not gonna be calling, you know, set context directly inside of the layout because that gets really messy, hard to keep track of. And then whenever you wanna access that state, you have to remember what the key was and you also have to type the context as well. It's much cleaner just to define functions to handle this for you. That way you can call get user state from any component and it's typed and it does in fact get the user state. So we'll first have a function to set the user state. So we'll say set user state and it's gonna take in an initial data prop, which is gonna be typed as user data. And this is what's going to be used to initially populate the store. So we'll say user state. It's gonna be a writable with the initial data just like this. And then we're gonna call set context, which we can import from Svelte. And as you can see here, Copilot's trying to be smart and be ahead of me, but this is essentially what we're gonna do. We're gonna set a key, and then we're gonna pass that user state, which in this case is a store, to the context. Now what I prefer to do is I actually prefer to set this as like a separate variable. That way if I'm getting that context in multiple different places, I can just update that variable and don't have to rely on myself remembering to change them all or any little typos and things like that. So I'll just say user CTX, and then I just name it something like this, right? Something unique. And then I'll just pass that as this first argument. And then what I'll do is I'll actually return that user state so that we can access it after we set it instead of our root layout. And then we'll also have a function called get user state. It's not gonna take in any arguments, and it's just gonna return get context user CTX. But right now it's not typed, right? So if you look here, it's gonna say type of unknown. And so to type this, we can just pass it as a generic type argument here as user data. And so now anywhere that calls get user state is gonna get this user data object, which just looks like this. Now something to keep in mind here is that get context and set context have to be called within the component's initialization. So you can't have a function that calls get context after the component is mounted, right? You can't programmatically go and fetch the context, right? It has to happen with the component's initialization inside of the script tag. And of course, the same thing goes for set context. These are Svelte specific. This is strictly for getting access to that data within a component. Now, inside of our root layout, what we can do is since we're returning this data here from our server load, we can actually get the data prop. And then we can say user equals set user state, and then pass in data.user, which is typed according to that initial data type. And then rather than doing name here, we can just say user.name. Now you can see in the top right, we have our username being rendered. So now let's go ahead and access this state from other components. So inside of the page, we can just call user equals get user state. Remember, we don't have to take any arguments there. And then we can just call user.name, just as we did before. And user needs to be an object, oh, whoops. Inside of our user get user state here, I meant to make this a writable. Apologies, I've been in Svelte 5 land for the past couple of days, so I forgot about this one. So we need to wrap this with writable to make sure that it is in fact a writable store. And then now inside of our page, we can actually subscribe to that. And if we go back to the home page, we'll see that we are in fact getting our username rendered there. Same thing goes for the footer. So we can really just copy this down here and then user.name. Now it's here. And then same thing goes for the profile as well. I'll import that. I'm kind of being excessive here with my usage of this, but um, hopefully I'm driving the point home that this isn't so, so bad versus importing the object. Obviously an extra line of code. Before we didn't have to have this and this, we just had this, but it's not such a bad trade-off in my opinion. And then lastly, you'd probably never do this, but we're going to go straight into our component here and import it. We can of course pass this as a prop, I just want to show that it does in fact work with components and nested deeply in that state. So user equals get user state. And then we can bind the value of this input to that user.name. And so now we have all of our state wired up, our global state. If I change this input here, you're going to see that all of my state reacts to that. Now, if I go home, you'll see that it is in fact still changed, right? Because guess what didn't rerun? The root layout load didn't run. So therefore, we didn't have any changes to the data.user. Therefore, this is going to persist as we navigate throughout our application. Now, of course, 
if you're updating the user's profile, you want to invalidate that data so that it is in fact in sync with what is actually in your profile, but that's beyond the scope of this video. And so that's how simple it is to set up global state with a writable store. Now let's look at it with a writable object or a reactive object using Svelte 5. So in this case here, we can just change this to dollar sign state. We can get rid of this writable here, then we can get rid of all of this, and then one of these. And then what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to replace the dollar sign user. So if we look here, we're subscribing, I need to replace this with just user.name. And I can just do a quick search and replace here throughout my small application to replace all of those. And as you're gonna see, everything is updated and this will work the exact same way, except in our profile page, which I didn't save. So there we go. And now when I go to edit this, you're gonna see that it does react the exact same way. And then lastly, we're gonna be covering the class, which is an extremely powerful tool. I, I, I underestimated how powerful this was until I started experimenting with more advanced patterns with it. But I keep trying to do things with classes and I'm like, there's no way it's gonna work. And then it works and I'm just shocked. So I'm looking forward to covering these in more detail and some of the power they wield. But in this very minimal example here, all we have to do is change this to new user, passing that initial data, and since we have a name property as part of this class, we don't have to update anything. It's the same as that object, except it's just more versatile. And we can go here and go like this, and everything updates. And so that's the safe way to implement global React state within your Svelte applications using Svelte 4 or Svelte 5. I hope this video has been informative. If it has, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.